remember what I always say, you can always bring it back. I'm going to go around the painting now. These areas are darker. They're further away from the light source, which is the centre of the circle. And again, you, once this is dry, one can always go back and, and fine-tune all those areas. Problem, problem we have today is time, like always. We don't have time to, to let it dry and then work on it and let it dry, which is the way I normally work. I'm going to touch, I'm going to use a touch of blue and I always recycle and this is one brush that I love using, a toothbrush. You know those old discarded toothbrush? Well they create a really nice effect so as from now don't throw toothbrushes. They make wonderful paint brushes. See I like the blue because it adds to the, the contrast of the, you know the yellow and the blue always work well. But look at the brush because it's so thick. It, it scratches the paint in a really nice way. Anyway, one thing I, I, I started mentioning earlier on, when I said I'd seen uh, uh, bracelets in the Royal Academy, I also recently, this past Christmas, went to see an exhibition by, by Barceló in Málaga, in the CAC, Centro de Arte Contemporáneo de Málaga. It's something I'll never tire of recommending people to do. If we can always use it, we can use a comparison with music like we normally do. Going to see a painting in an exhibition live, for me, is exactly the same as going to see a band play live. One thing is listening to the studio album, and another is sort of see them play live. When you see Barcelos painting, and hopefully you'll see them on screen at some point now, you can see the, the intricacies of, you know, the textures you use. The, the materials he uses and, and that this sort of thickness in a photograph you probably wouldn't appreciate but if you saw it live you'll definitely see it and it, it makes a hell of a difference anyway I'm now beginning to get that circle sort of a effect and it'll take hours to do properly I can carry on forever but it, you know it's a bit like the James Bond circle but it's coming coming along Slowly but surely. And now, look at the actual material. That's another subject I'd like to talk about. Recently, Andrew, in the press, there was an article or a letter in response to an article I wrote reviewing an exhibition. I'm not going to get into the, the whatever the letter said, but one of the, the headings questioned, uh, uh, the heading said something like, Mr. Koskieri, uh, Philos... Um, uh, photographic or abstract it was if I didn't know whether the painter was photographic or abstract now that we're talking texture and and, and uh, you know expressionism for me all art by its nature is and has to be abstract all art even if it's a really hyper hyper realistic photo like painting because of the nature of the material which is plastic and paint all art is Abstract. Remember the painting I did with the t-shirt where I mentioned Matisse and this is not a pipe? Well, this is exactly the same. This is paint. Even if I make it look like a tunnel or I make it look like a man or whatever, by its nature, it will always be abstract. So I thought it, it'd come in nicely at this stage because we're using such a rough material. I'm going to do a spot of action painting now. I don't know whether it's going to work. This was not planned. Whoops, a bit too much there. Probably help to emphasize those rings. Whenever I've done too much, I'll, I'll, I'll fix it. And even if you get drops like that, it'll add to the effect. I want to wave the effect. The colors are rather dull. I mean, I would have preferred the black to look black. But again, time constraints. See, that doesn't work. That needs fixing. I don't know whether this might work or not, but I've got a feeling, an urge to get a really bright, warm yellow in there. Because it's not dry, it might not work. I don't know. See, it's mixing with the white. It doesn't matter. I want to I give it that effect. 
and maybe have some some of these streaks like that. I mean, getting a, a, a bright light in painting is not easy because you can't get brighter than white, but it has to do with what colors you put next to it. Anyway, this painting with more time would look a treat. At the moment, it served the purpose and it's not quite finished yet. I'm just you know, mixing the paint now freely expressing my feeling as opposed to being delicate. But this is nearly ready now for, for today's purposes. And, and dry brush effect, just quick strokes. See, that's dry brush. Further add to that feeling of being drawn into the painting. Touch of white. I did say in the beginning there was going to be sort of a, a, a humanoid man looking figure. This I've done before earlier on and it's it's simple. Pa uh, uh, papier mache, paper mache. If, you, if I turn it around you see kitchen roll paper mixed with glue. You create the shape then you paint it with the PVA and whatever and it's a, it's a figure. I like this like I said before, these uh, neo expressionists used uh, uh, found objects, they used to stick things on. This is ideal. So I'm not going to stick it now because it's all wet, it's pointless. But normally I would put either silicone glue or, or the pistol gun thing, pistol gl uh, gun glue, and just position it wherever I feel it's. Well, I mean, the guy is coming either towards the viewer or away from the viewer. Now, obviously, it needs. I would have a bit of sort of a yellow on the on the background, maybe a bit of shadow, so I'm gonna get some black and just have like the shadow there. You know, as if he's casting his own shadow on the painting. Again, with time you can work this to really get the perfect shadow effect, whatnot, but there's no time now. So that's more or less ready for today's effect. You know, even, even if I add some white now to quickly contrast the shadow. Uh, excuse me. And as we finish off what's the last program, I'd like to mention a few things. First of all, I'd, love, I'd like to thank everyone, loads of people, people from all walks of life, from young to really old. Uh, an 80-year-old lady the other day stopped me to say how much she enjoyed the program. So I'd like to, to really thank those people. Also, I'd love to mention something that's probably not, the viewer is not aware of, and that this whole program, the whole of it, has been the work of two people, myself, researching, painting and presenting, and then Andrew Ajus El Motru, behind the camera, who also, who's also done, thank you for the bow, who's also done all the sound effects, and without whose collaboration this program would have been impossible. For me, it's been uh, a wonderful experience. I've never done any TV presenting before. I didn't know what I was getting into, uh, but I've tremendously, tremendously enjoyed the experience. And let me into uh, let me let me sort of uh, uh, mention one thing that viewers might not be aware of. I've always said, you know, be sin miedo, no fright, just jump, go for it, sin miedo. I can confess now that every single program I've done, I've been so scared before doing it because at the end of the day, you don't know what you're going to end up with. You're doing it in front of a camera. You've got to talk and say things. And believe you me, I've been really, really scared. It might not have shown, but I have been and I was. But you have to overcome that. So with that thought or, or food for thought, I'd like to leave you and hopefully I will see you soon. Good night. Yeah.